Hey everyone, I'm the Real Ab, and you're watching the A20 Guardian Hunter Game Analysis. This is run number 54. Let's get started. Another Sapphire start. Interesting. This looks very familiar. 100 gold or lose all gold for max HP. I think those were two options in the last run. Interesting. I'm seeing a pretty aggressive... Oh. This is not connected. <laughs> um, well, this is still pretty good. I guess if there's a way I can take this, I'll go for it. Get two campfires at the end. It doesn't look like there's other, very many other great options. There's a two elite, two campfire path this. I guess if you cut up through here as well. <clears throat> There's also a lot of question marks at the beginning of the map. 100 gold could do very well here. So I think I'm going to take the 100 gold start and go like that. Uh, just to take one last look at the options. Upgrade a card. Um, pretty good in t on Twin Slam or Curl Up. Honestly, although with the Sapphire start, Twin Slam is a bit less of a priority since I don't put Sapphire and Twin Slam there. So I might end up going with Curl Up instead because if you grab a Brace 8 card, then uh, on your second shuffle you can get some more. Um, you can get another defensive mode proc. <clears throat> uh, we're not taking max HP, especially not for gold with with uh, shop pathing like this. And I don't think this is a boss swap seed. There are paths to take very conservative routes in case we don't get something strong at the beginning, but I think a 100 gold start should be just fine for us. I really only want to take a boss swap start if I'm forced into it, like if the act is guaranteed to be bad in some way. Like, not like the maximum you can get is like two elites, one campfire, or two campfires, one elite. That's the kind of uh, situation I would boss swap in because I do value this very highly. These draws are not the greatest, but yeah, the curl up being at the bottom of the deck was not good, but that's fine. We will still be okay. Wow. These draws are awful. You'd think this was a jawworm fight, but no, it's two slimes. I wonder if I messed up somewhere. I really doubt I did, but... Eh. Interesting. Two gems and a future plans. Amber's pretty good with Twin Slam. Quartz, not so much. And future plans is just very good in general. It's our act boss, Hexa. Well, we do need scaling of some kind. And we're not guaranteed to get a lot through the rest of the run. Uh, through, through the rest of the act before we get there. So you kind of take uh, have to take the opportunities you're given for Hexaghost. And while I think Amber might be a good long-term thing, I think Future Plans is our play right now. Kind of hurts to pass those gems up. I like both of them. Oh, very interesting. Uh, I think we can afford to lose some HP here. We can definitely start with five. Okay. Uh, my, the main reason being we're not going to have to fight... Uh, uh, super, super, a hard pull hallway fight uh, before our first elite. We just have these three fights and the shop. So that's a whole lot less risk we have to take, despite that first fight not going very well at all. Uh, another thing we have to consider is that we have these in our deck, which makes us worse against Jawworm. So we could end up taking a low lot more HP as, uh, damage as well. Um, we also didn't get a potion. So maybe this is the safer option if we're going to sacrifice an elite later. I don't know. This route still seems very good. I'm willing to cook this at least one more time. Okay. 
Am I willing to go to 36? No. Just have to take the 11 damage and go. Yep, this is the future plans. Problem. The first card reward wasn't very good, though. It would have to have been Quartz to be the safest. Full damage turn is nice, though. I think we can afford to do this, we're going to uh, get one of these defense out. And we can just kill anyway. Good. We had a way to re-enter defensive, which is why I was doing that. Walker Claw or Shield Spikes? I think Shield Spikes at this point might have to be our choice. One thing I very notably did not do was take was uh, Path for a Bailout option. Maybe that was the reason to take the boss swap here. Because this pathing through here is not very good. It's only three fights. And then some campfires, I guess. Well, let's see what's in the shop. Maybe this will save us. Sling of Courage is interesting. Sling of Courage plus Orb Walk, also very interesting. Strike for Strike is a great front-loaded damage card as well. So definitely thinking about that. I don't think these potions are very good. I guess Blessing the Forge is okay. I do have to be careful about how much setup I'm taking, because we do still have to beat our next fight. So maybe it's Sling of Courage Strike for Strike and we just leave the rest. This Orb Walk, though, is on sale. <coughs> Excuse me. It's a very good upside. Two strength is good. Is it good enough? Is it good enough for Knob? I don't know. I think with 36 HP we have a decent shot. Against this next hallway fight, we have shield spikes, so that helps a bit. I am just going to go with this. Sixteen, huh? I'm gonna just throw this into stasis so that I can get so I can uh, get my chance of drawing a strike up. I don't know if that was necessary, we might have been guaranteed one. Temporal Strike. Yeah, okay. That seems fine. Suspension for Orb Walk is okay, but I have a future plans and I can just play it too, so... Let's take the free attack. It is sentries, which means I'm going to drink this immediately. Interesting. I think it's just double future plans. Time Capacitor and Stasis Engine don't do very much in this fight. So this might be a bit overkill, but I still think it's correct. At least to get a head start on what's happening here. Please draw me my uh, curl up. No? Okay. Looks like we're just going to take some damage then. Unless... No, we don't have a kill here. What I can do, though, is just take 10 damage to enter defensive. That's not too bad. Uh, defend in two turns. Yes. Another strength is nice. 
Uh, permanent thorns, interesting. Maybe not the correct play there, actually, because now I only have one energy. Uh, maybe we'll still be fine. Let's, um, actually, we have a lot of block next turn. Let's just make sure we draw enough to block this turn. If we draw attacks, we'll go for one of these other two, since I have thorns permanently here. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, alright, let's just juggle these defense, then. <clears throat> Eleven damage. Well, they're both at thirty-five here. This attacks takes it down to thirty-two, so two more attacks will kill. Okay. Maybe I should have gone for this one. Eh. Maybe, maybe there was some sort of calculation. I had five attacks in the draw. I don't know what the odds were of drawing two there, but maybe it was non-negligible. Either way, we knew that we would be uh, risking it a little bit with what we get. Wow, okay. Um, well, I've done double orb walk uh, in the past, and that did not work out. We died to Gremlin Leader. Um, stasis Engine now... We could build into it, but also I don't have the confidence to. Anchor helps quite a bit with our next elite fight, although we still have no potions. Priming shot might just be better. I'm thinking priming shot, although I don't know if I can beat this. None of the other two elites actually attack on turn one with anchor. I don't know why I said this would be good for the elite. I don't think we can beat Knob with this deck, so we have to bail right. Then make a decision. Which means we miss out on the campfire. I am still a bit nervous about... whatever card we take. Actually, if I take Priming Shot, I can just suck at the Sapphire immediately, because we can do that, and then we can rest. Maybe resting allows us to take this. I forgot that this was a campfire. Um, I actually kind of favor that over more hallway fights. I know we get one here, but I think we'll be mostly okay. Anchor helps a lot in hallway fights. Okay. I could also upgrade the priming shot so it braces 10 immediately. But I'm not confident that it helps against Gremlin Knob. Am I sure I want to go to Gremlin Knob? I have 38 HP, which helps. I have strength. This is 24, 34, 41, 49, plus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 16, 49, I said? Plus 16 is 65. And that's if I play all the attacks. That's. Only two thirds of Gremlin Knob's HP, so it would take, I would think, five turns in order to kill. Which is a full cycle of their attacks. So it's a buff, eight, thirty, sorry, twenty-four, twenty-four, and then back to eight. Uh, although we can probably get rid of the eight, but we can't prevent the second attack unless we use like defensive mode. That's still a lot of HP damage, I know from experience, so I'm going to just go right. We're going to see if we can uh, get some good cards for this elite instead. Um, I'm going to get us close to defensive mode in case we don't hit curl up. We did not. And we need to block, so...
53 minus 16 is 37. That's not enough. So I'm taking 6 here. I guess I should have attacked last turn. Thirty-five, thirty-six. Both of those split. I'm gonna just use my block. Okay, this is good. Very good. Strength Potion. Uh, a Spheric Shield. That is a much better rare for right now. Uh, I do think I will take that. Even over the reroute. Mercury Hourglass. That's great. I think between what we just picked up, we can actually go for a knob now. This is a free turn of defensive mode, that mean, which means we can stall for one longer than usual, which is usually still one turn of defensive. So I think even if we don't find a damage card here, we're still fine to take the Gremlin Knob fight. We do want to enter defensive mode here, uh, especially for next turn. We're still pretty far away from killing, so let's do future plans. 21 damage, fully blocked. Of course, it hits the gear up. It's fine, though. We'll put defensive in. Or, we'll put defend into stasis. 54 episodes in, and I still can't get my defensive mode and defend and stasis straight. Uh, Polybeam, actually pretty good here. <clears throat> With the Sling Courage, the Strength Potion, and our Orb Walk, I think this will be great in the short, ter short term, and we can build into it in the long term. Feels better than these two. Fight the Gremlins, gain Pick of Rhapsody. Uh... And then if we dig, then we... If we dig with the pickaxe, we have to go into the elite fight with loose gems. Or we would have to use up campfires for it. We also don't get a card reward or gold from this. We just immediately come back to this screen. I don't, I don't want to have loose gems in the Gremlin Knob fight either from Dig With Claws, so we're just going to go. A bit unfortunate, but that's how it goes sometimes. Oh, wow. Um, if I do defensive mode for two turns, that gets us block for the first big hit. Mmm. This is not a good draw, I gotta say. I guess we could just tank one hit and be fine. If I need to, I can use the Strength Potion. Okay. I guess I can also enter defensive mode with other cards in gear up as well. Uh, we did not draw or block, so I'm going to use this. Polybeam. Oh, we're not going to need the uh, other turn. We're going to be just fine. Cool. wonder if that means we didn't need the Strength Pot. Gem Cannon. Oh god. Uh, we have a few more gem slots, but not many. So this would be doing 30 damage. You know, I used to like this card so much, and then 
once the series rolled around, I just wasn't taking as many gem cards. I don't know exactly what happened with that. I think a reroute's very um, reasonable here. We do have a future plans, but we're not guaranteed to draw that early. Uh, and we also only have a curl up. With the size our deck is getting, uh, we probably are fine with just. Uh, uh, we probably have enough slots to use future plans plus one. Uh, depending on the draw timer. So yeah, I'm going to take the reroute for another attack. Now our upgrade... Unfortunately, this doesn't work. So it, have, it would have to be future plans. Maybe we do just upgrade future plans because we have anchor. I can see that being correct. Although if we got a bottled tornado, I would... Um, I would use it on orb walk, actually, because we could do that turn one. And uh, the next thing is an uh, event, so that's technically possible. Yeah, let's do it. We got an anchor. Let's uh, make sure that we get our power up fast. Another shop. <laughs> Are you kidding me? How do I don't understand how I call this stuff. Um, I say the most I say the most random callouts, and then it ends up showing up. Um, well, uh, this shop I don't feel amazing about anyway. Yeah, this is I think just a card remove. What do we remove? Maybe it is a strike. We're leaning into strength, which makes strikes better, but we can find other attack sources. Defends get worse with defensive mode, but also we don't have a an overarching other plan for block in the future. I guess we could lean into stasis for that, but we would need better block cards in order to actually do that. I think it's possible. I don't... Well, in the Hexaghost fight, we kind of need block. Or do we? We have 40 HP. I may regret asking that question. I could see it going wrong. I could see us... Um, not having enough strength for the fight, and then it goes on too long. We have burns to worry about. We got hexago stone strength. Yeah, let's get rid of a strength. I guess the power potion makes us a lot better at the fight. Let's guarantee we win it. By guarantee, I mean give us a marginally better chance. Uh, resting here would be a mistake, since uh, the first six times attack scales with our current health. Um... Since we're guaranteed future plans on turn one, let's upgrade Orb Walk. Floating Orbs. Stasis Engine, still not good enough. Repulsor actually might be better than Floating Orbs. We are going to be getting 5 strength this fight from uh, Stasising Orb Walk and then playing the Orb Walk when it comes out. So, let's get rid of the burns. Let's play the future plans. Alright, so next turn, how to calculate this, you divide your HP in half, it's 20. And then you find the first multiple of 6 that is above that. So that's 24, which means our next our next turn we're being attacked for 24. I think this is a good of reason as any to use the Spheric Shield. Even though it is early in the fight, Guardi uh, excuse me, Hexaghost does not attack for very much uh, on other turns. So, using our big block card early does not really concern me, I don't think. 
Also, let's put Polybeam in stasis. Let me get that out. Hopefully we'll do more damage. Um, I could re-enter defensive for thorns, but I think that's a bit much. Let's do strike, strike, curl up. Yeah, okay, now we have another card in stasis. Um, in fact, let's put defend in stasis. We know Polybeam's coming out, so we can use stasis next turn. Although, orb walk showing up in the last draw is not amazing. But we do know defense coming out next turn, so we can still put this in. So, I want to put something in with reroute, I think. And I guess that's going to be polybeam. Just so that I know that it comes out after orb walk starts gaining me strength. Honestly, any card here is valid. Uh, I think I want to play cur uh, gear up, though. I want to enter defensive... Because next turn is the two times attack. Although we do have defend next turn. No, this this draw we do want to enter defensive. I don't think primary shot's a big deal. I think it's either temporal strike or polybeam. This gives me an extra energy, which could be useful. Yeah, let's go with that actually. That'll come out at zero cost, and then we'll have stuff in stasis, and it will. Uh, gain us an energy for the turn, and we know we're going to be able to use it better because we have Repulsor, and we're not going to have to worry too much about burns. Okay, we don't want to use Reroute. I think we want to do Strike Reroute and put Orb Walk in. We are a bit slow on this, so I do think it was correct to use the Power Potion for sure. Um, we don't want to enter defensive, still. Which we could do with... Oh wait, no, this is only 8. Um, still, 1 strength is nice. This does full block this turn, though, so I am going to play it. And then I'll use my energy on attacks. In 2 turns, Hexaghost is going to be doing another 2 times attack, so I guess we'll want this on that turn. We'll use Priming Shot to brace for 8. Also, this is the last time we're going to use Curl Up. When it comes out. I don't know if that really affects the, is affected by the draws or anything, but I'm going to go with that. Alright, Warbox coming out. We're going to get a big boost of strength this turn. Uh, looks like Shield Spikes is going to be the play instead. Is it Temporal Strike Reroute Shield Spikes? That comes out in three turns, not two. We might have to deal... Yeah, we're going to have to deal with the Inferno, so that actually makes this difficult. Maybe we don't enter defensive. Maybe we just take the damage so that we have defensive mode next turn and then stacking up block for the turn after. That makes a lot more sense, actually. Let's do that. Um, yeah, we're just going to tank this whole, this whole thing. We're going to tank all 20 damage. Ow. And again, we still don't want this, so let's get out of our draw. Oh wait, no. Yes, because we have Repulsor. So yeah, there's the block for this turn, and the next turn is going to be a 36 damage turn, so kind of needed this. We do have five strength, so it is possible that we just kill. Okay. I didn't know how likely that was to happen. It didn't feel very likely. But we ended up doing a lot of damage before uh, having only been at halfway down its HP on turn six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, turn six. And it was coming and it was coming up in three turns. But we made it. Anyways, uh, Stasis Engine, again? No? 
Citrine or Construction Form. Citrine Twin Slam is always nice. But Construction Form is just very good. I think I'm going to have to go with the usual. Stack up more strength. Hey, look, makeshift battery. Um, makeshift battery, busted crown, or curse, or uh, curse of the bell. I guess it's calling bell. With future plans, um, we don't have to worry about these uh, slimes from uh, makeshift battery that much. Our first draw is completely free. We have a completely free energy on our first draw. After that, we have stasis cards to help us with the downside. And if we're so inclined, we can pick up a Repulsor sometime. Uh, I think with the expensive cards in our deck, like Construction Form, Spheric Shield, Shield Spikes, even to a certain extent, Twin Slam, uh, we're very much inclined to take an extra energy over Calling Bell, so I'm going to do that. Okay. What is our act looking like here? Kind of weird. Only in this area, there's only a few. There's only a couple two elite things, and ni neither of them have campfires. Uh, this one goes off to the middle of nowhere. Two elite, two campfire routes. I guess this is a three and one, but this is a burning elite, which I don't take an act to because it's scary. Something like this. And we'll decide what route to go up here. We have 77 gold, so it's looking like we're going to go like that. Okay. Uh, wow, that's a pretty good turn one. Uh, extra energy, I guess, is still fine. Even though we have a fourth already. So we're being weakened here. I think we do this. Okay. Those come out in two turns, which is maybe not the best. Hmm. What we can do here is play both of these, and then we'll have defensive mode for two turns whenever uh, Chosen is guaranteed to be uh, doing a large attack. I've mentioned this before, but Cultist goes Hex on turn one because we're at Ascension 17 or higher. Uh, then it always alternates between a debuff of some kind and then a large attack. The debuff is either giving us weaken and themselves strength, or uh, hitting us with a 12 damage attack that also makes us vulnerable. Uh, and then the other, and then on the damage turns, it's always a six by two attack. Uh, of course, this is three strength, or a large. I want to say 18 attack, which is going to be 21 with three strength. And I'm basing that off of what I remember with Vulnerable being 31. It could be 21 base. I think it might, it could be either one. But anyway, let's uh, prepare for that next large damage turn. Let's see, is it Vulnerable? Yes, it is. Yeah, it starts out 12, now it's 15. Uh, thorns is nice. So 31 next turn, huh? So 34 minus 15 is... 19, we gain 10 back from defensive mode, so that's 29. So we need one defend. Okay. I'll leave my free defense for later. I guess I could have played a free defend and then put... the one cost defend into stasis or something? I don't know. Okay, we got the two times attack anyway, so... Uh, they're dead because thorns. You know, ever since that the change to Shield Spikes to make the thir Thorns permanent, I've felt this card being very relevant. It's pretty nice. A Ruby. That could go in Temporal Strike. Don't need Temporal Shield. Doesn't, ex doesn't accelerate twice upon upgrade either. Yeah, I'm fine with taking a Ruby. It takes us to 20 cards, we don't have to have another draw. It's fine. And uh, being a essentially zero-cost card, Temporal Strike is just fine, even though it is an attack, to put this in. 
So, uh, also defensive mode for this fight. Yeah, thorns. Let's go for the front guy since they're not attacking this turn. And watch them hit themselves over and over on the boards. We full block this turn. Yeah, this is 27. Great. Uh, which means I would like to play construction form. And I guess we'll get this down further. This is 3 and 3. Is there any way to kill all of them? No, maybe I should just target one then. Or block. In you go. How's my sound right now? Good enough? It's usually higher than this. Alright. Polybeam doing work now. And it's dead. Okay. Ooh, ancient power. Interesting. Maybe the ruby goes in there. Ancient power. Strength and dex. That's usually the kind of card I take early in a run. So I can build into it. But dexterity might not be something we're leaning to, into this run. Then again, I might need something. Might need something for my late game defense. I just don't have debuff reduction yet. Which would require um, an Onyx, Resilient Plate, or Overload Plus. Because unfortunately this does not keep permanent stats anymore by itself. It upgrades to give you more temporary strength and dex. Also it doesn't exhaust, which is a positive, but now the numbers are a bit lower to compensate for that. I'm not sure how I feel about it. Piercing Hide. You know, I'm wondering if these changes have actually been pushing me further towards a Thorns build. With the Shield Spikes changes, and also me noticing that I'm dying because I'm relying too much on defensive mode, uh, going for more defensive strategies in general might be better. Uh, and Thorns plays right into that. So that I have the uh, defense for late game, but also have offense from Thorns. If you stack this up enough times, it is very good. I don't think we take roll attack. I think Ancient Power is a bit of a stretch here. If we had an Onyx, that would be a different story, but even if I do find an Onyx, it might just go into Twin Slam. Piercing Hide is something, but I don't think it does enough, so I think we are going to skip. Let's find a card. That's a lot of gems. Uh, that's a body crash, interesting. I don't think we're doing body crash strats either. Although, with uh, Spirit Shield, we do get in defensive mode a bit quicker than usual. We can always upgrade Priming Shot as well to make sure that we have a second chance of getting into defensive faster. If we stack that with Spirit Shield, then we can get at least one good turn of body crash. There's the Resilient Plate, by the way. Of course, with 20 cards, you have a pretty good chance of that, but I had no idea that we'd be finding this event. Um, let's go over these. Tourmaline. Tourmaline's a no. We're not doing a lot of Thorns things yet. We need block for that. Garnet. Garnet actually works pretty well in Twin Slam. I could see me taking that pretty easily. Temporal Shield, no. Piercing Hide, no. Incinerate. Uh, despite the fact that we have Future Plane stuff, still no. We don't need a second Ruby. Emerald, I don't think works here, unless we use Twin Slam, or, but then we would still need debuff reduction to make use of that properly. Recovers more stasis, so no. These are two-cost multi-attacks, which are decent, but still probably no. Laser turret and Sentry Blast uh, both take up stasis slots that we're using with future plans, so no. Body Crush, I don't think it does enough in the late game. We already have decent... Uh, stuff for right now, so no to that. Fence team would be competing with Garnet for this. 
Garnet is good, but Vent Steam also has its own sockets. But I guess if we're behind on sockets already, we want to fill these up, not add more. Although very notably, this um, costs two to give us two vulnerable to all enemies. Granted, but we don't have AOE. Charge core, no. Resilient plate. I don't think we need resilient plate to scale up our strength on Ruby. We have a construction form and orb block, and I think that'll be enough. Clone. Uh, it's more stasis, so no. Charge up, no. So I think it's either Vent's team or Garnet. I do very much like the Garnet. I guess there's also damage attached to it, which is nice as well. We do have energy. And we have the ability to put something else in the Twin Slam to go with the Garnet. Yeah, let's fill up the sockets first. Also, Garnet is a very nice card because it's not very intrusive. Uh, let's go for the far right one. Do putting that would, would have been interesting, actually. Yeah, I'll put that in. We did draw curl up this turn, of course. Um, but I think this is fine anyway. We can enter defensive by taking damage. I'm going to just play this since the fight's going to be over soon. Also going to do Polybeam first to see where that lands. Okay, landing here. Pulse's fight can be really scary for Guardian if you take too long. Anyone, really, but Guardian especially takes too long a lot. Let's do Spirit Shield. It's 30 out of 32. Oh, hey. We have Thorns. And also Mercury Hourglass. Okay. Explosive Potion. Strike for Strike Plus. That is a lot of damage, and if we're taking on elites, we're probably going to need something like that. You've taken enough setup cards. Sheesh. Yeah, I'll take a I'll take a large damage card. Uh, we're not going to have enough gold for the shop. The best we get is fifty. So yeah, we're going to go to the right and hit that campfire first anyway. Uh oh. I could do pot gear up for 10 block. 14, 18. Not enough. Uh, with explosive pot, though, it could be, but then I take more damage from this. Yeah, let's just enter defensive mode now. I don't think I have anything amazing for that new pot right now, anyway. Well, construction form, I guess, but if we play that, we're already winning. So I'm not. Not really considering that to be a huge Dupont target at this point in the game. Get some block for next turn as well. It saved us 20 block, actually, didn't it? Avocado always attacks, so no harm in playing that right now. Especially since we're frail, we're going to need every point of block we can get, and, and vulnerable, by the way. Alright, I'm going to... Do I just play that? I think I just play that because I have all this coming up. Twin slam in. No longer vulnerable, no longer frail. I guess no to construction form here. We enter defensive with shield spikes curl up. 
I guess construction form goes into stasis then, doesn't it? It's interesting. We'll put defend in, since that's the cheaper card. We're going to have twin slam next turn, which is nice. Also, I think that was the last of our defensive mode. Oh, Garnet coming in clutch. I think it's a kill now. Yeah. Might have been a kill before, but it's definitely a kill now. Stasis Strike. Interesting. pre program is also interesting. It's a good Ruby target. But we uh, already overload on Stasis. This could be a good late game solution, though, if we're able to play it. Gaining a Stasis slot makes us better at juggling cards th through Stasis. Um... So we get more value out of free cards. Huh. It is expensive, though. We're going to need to take more stasis things if we're going to make that work. Maybe a second future plans. I think we still take it, though. We'll find a way. We need something for late game. Alright, Garnet, Garnet, I think, is actually going into Twin Slam. And Ruby is going into Temporal Strike. If nothing else, we want these out of our deck. And uh, socketing them is a great way to do that. Now I think we upgrade Twin Slam. Yeah. So that if we find another gem, we can socket it fast. And I think that's somewhat likely. Oh, wow. Well, Construction Form Turn 1... It's hard to ignore. And we drew a lot of stuff, a lot of possibilities here. We have Explosive Pot we can use with both of our attacks to kill them. Uh, we can enter Defensive with Gear Up, Curl Up. Actually, I think the Defensive Route is the best. We enter Defensive with this, and then... Well, not and then, but... We attack this guy with reroute, so that the thorns from defensive mode kill him. Oh wait, we're one short, because we need to kill both of these. Uh, okay, maybe explosive pot then? And then we kill the left one with priming shot or reroute? The future plans gear up, reroute, curl up with explosive pot. But if I enter defensive mode and I kill both gremlins, then gremlin leader probably is an attack next turn. So maybe I save the explosive pot and just leave one gremlin alive? That seems reasonable. Let's do that. Okay. So now if gremlin leader attacks, we'll have a lot of block for it. She did not. But we have a lot of block for this now, too. Uh, and I think it's very likely we use the Explosive Pot this turn. Uh, this upcoming turn. Yeah. Hmm. Drew some interesting attacks here. This kills this. Then we got... What is this, usually? Seven? We have two strengths, so that's... Oh, right, because we have uh, Sling of Courage. So it's 9, it went down to 6, but now it'll be 11 going down to 8. And then 8 with Vulnerable would be 12, maybe even 13 with the rounding. Uh, with the weekend in play. Be 11, 16, 12? Yeah, I guess it would be. Actually, let's use the calculator for this. So let's see, this is normally 7, we have 9, so make it 11, so 11 times 1.5 times 0.75. 12, okay. So that was right. So that's for the second hit, one vulnerable. The first hit will still be 8. 8 and 12, that's enough to kill this guy. So we could do Temporal Strike here, Twin Slam, Twin Slam here. I think Priming Shot... Yeah, Priming Shot has enough to kill this. So we don't actually have to use Explosive. 
that's good, I think. Although we don't know if we're taking damage next turn or not. I guess we also want to do Spheric Shield. We can do that. This is zero, one, two, two, four. And then after that we have construction form, so we, so even if she doesn't attack, it's not like we wasted this. This is a safety measure, and then this handles whatever other attacks come our way for the rest of the fight. Let's do it like that. Twelve. There. Now we got spirit shield. We use our curl up and our future plants. Oh wait, I just I didn't leave room. She didn't even attack. Oh well, I guess we play orb walk. We have room. We have room. <laughs> False alarm. Holy shit. Uh, Cinder's Bane being at the bottom of the deck is pretty cool. Uh, now we are getting attacked. So it looks like it's going to be shield spikes here. How much can we block? We can block two hits? That's great, actually. Another stasis slot I don't think helps here. I think we're going to put this into stasis and play these two, so... Is there any way we can, way we can manipulate this? Uh, this is this is 5 damage, this is 9 damage. We want 2 hits on this from this, so we don't want to strike here. Strike here means 1 hit on this, we'll kill it. Okay. That's fine. Shield Gremlin going to save Gremlin Leader some HP because of thorns. Oh, interesting. Uh, Mercury Hourglass is going to handle Shield Gremlin next turn, so we don't even need to attack them. This is coming out next turn, so we can still use all our stasis. Goodbye, Shield Gremlin. Oh boy. Alright, that's a kill. Cool. Okay, we're getting a lot of strength here. I feel good about this. Although, any run with... Are you kidding me? What? Okay, so you can get the you can get the event for this, pass it up, and still find it later. Interesting. Yo, time bomb's really good. We don't have AOE yet, and uh, we have future plans. Yeah, I'm gonna take that over the others. I don't think Guardian Roll is consistent enough for us. Although it is a lot of damage, I will I will say that much. Uh, next turn, uh, sec turn two against Sneko, we're not going to be vulnerable. Uh, Sneko has two moves after the confusion. One move that makes you vulnerable and weak, and one move that's just raw damage. Uh, and Sneko's main threat is being, uh, is making you vulnerable and then hitting for the big damage turn. Uh, but turn two, we're not going to be vulnerable, so I don't think we enter defensive mode here. I think we do strike, reroute, curl up. And if I draw or block next turn, I'm going to want to put that in, so I'm just going to say no to stasis here. 18. Maybe I should have said yes to stasis. We even got stasis strike. That's fine, though. We have enough energy to do all this. We'll block. And I'll put stasis strike in for a couple turns from now. That'll be nice. Wow. Okay. Let's do it. Uh, we don't need to play defend here, so I'm going to see if it hits it. No? Okay, well, we'll just put it in for next turn manually then. It doesn't matter anymore. Uh, Sneko does single hits, so we can just play our damage. Just get rid of it for the redraw. Have it for next turn, just in case. We are just going to win anyway. Okay. Temporal Potion's interesting. Uh... Is it better to just... I think it's better to just Swift Potion, though. We do have one more fight. I think the Explosive Potion is going to be important. I don't think we put stuff into Stasis fast enough for Temporal Potion. So, 
Swift Potion it is. Guardian World's back. Suspension Plus is here. With Stasis Strike and Time Bomb, I think we do actually take this. Especially since it's already upgraded. Ooh. I like Red Candle. Artifact Strip, an extra two strength. Uh, effectively. Two random gems. We'll have to deal with them in the next fight and whatever hallway fights we encounter. Which doesn't make me particularly happy to see it. But we do have a lot of open, open slots now. We have Suspension plus Strike for Strike, Reroute, and Twin Slam. So that's four more slots. So even if we get mediocre ones, we still have pretty good options to put them in. Like, for example, if I got another uh, another Sapphire, throw that into Strike for Strike. Since it already kind of is um, Brace in its own way from HP loss. Also, there's a lot of good possibilities for Twin Slam. Some good possibilities for Suspension. What would we upgrade here if we upgrade, though? That's pretty good, but not amazing. I don't think we have any amazing upgrades here. Priming Shot does do something. Curl Up... I don't think... Do I think the last few fights we've... last several fights, actually, we've had Curl Up. It's uh, not hit anything bad for us. That's kind of a side effect of having more energy. You don't need the curl up upgrade as much, usually. Um, yeah, it looks like a lot of these are damage or block upgrades, which we don't really need. Polybeam is notably a fifth hit, but we don't need that until the late game. I don't think. What are we fighting? Camp? You can make an argument, since you want to kill him faster after, uh, before his execute hits. Or, I guess, after your buffers are gone. I am going to go with the gems. I think we're strong enough to take on the next elite with this. Also, we hit 25 cards. Ooh, Amethyst. That's great for Twin Slam. And Tourmaline we can throw into, I guess, Reroute. I don't think it's a great one for Suspension, but Reroute could be okay. We'll, we'll uh, cross that bridge when we get to it. Hey, look, Amethyst already doing something. Uh, very notably, we don't have to use Swift Potion, but we might want to anyways. Because Vulnerable this turn isn't amazing. We still have to scale up a bit. Hitting Construction Form or Orb Block would be amazing. Uh, and we do need to scale up fast uh, against Book of Stabbing, so let's see if we get something good here. Spheric Shield. Um, well, I wish I had had that next turn. Now. Uh, next turn is either going to be the 21 or 24 attack. Spheric Shield will cover that completely. I guess it's not so bad to play it this turn. And then we'll do, like, Future Plans gear up. We'll put Twin Slam into... Or we could do Future Plans Strike. No, we'll do Future Plans gear up. And then we'll put Twin Slam into Stasis so that we have a little bit of time to... Uh, but Red Candle. Is it better to wait? If we don't do it turn 1, then it'll go off turn 4 and turn 7, instead of turn 3 and turn 6. That... our fight might end up going that far anyway. Let's see. Turn two, most of the time, it goes multi, multi, single, multi, multi, single. Uh, just based on the odds. I think the I think uh, the odds are much higher stacked towards doing the multi attack, and, but it can't do three uh, multi attacks in a row. So it always will do the single after that, and then it always goes back to the multi because it can't do that one two times in a row. So. On turn 7, when the Soul Burn would go off a second time, if we don't attack now, that would be another multi-hit, but we'd be preventing it, because uh, Gre Gremlin? Sheesh. Book of Stabbing would be dead. Um, if, we do, if we detonate on turn 6, we're preventing a single hit. Uh, it's still a lot of damage, either way. But we could use Construction Form to block a big hit. 
Alright, I'm going to wait one turn. I think we do need time to scale this up. So, let's do Sphere Shield, Future Shield, Gear Up. Let's have the energy for a future turn by playing the Gear Up now so we can enter defensive with one less energy. Um, okay. Time Bomb to get Twin Slam out now. I think is absolutely fine, so let's do it. We're, we're playing attacks this turn. Or, I guess, an attack? Which what, which attack do we want? I guess Strike for Strike, since we have the Thorns this turn. Yeah, let's do that. Priming Shot isn't getting us into Stasis yet. Defensive, excuse me. Alright. Construction Form, what good timing. Hmm. Uh, well, I guess we always play this. I guess it's a matter of whether we do curl up or reroute as well. The only way we have to enter defensive mode next turn is shield spikes. Maybe we do kill this fast. This is a lot of damage. 19. Plus we have 12. Okay, I'm going to do the damage. And we're just going to... We're gonna hope that's enough. I think it will be. Yeah, we're, it it'll absolutely will be. Do this. Okay, we killed that a lot faster than I thought we would. Fragmented gem. That is actually very usable here. It's actually a good target for Twin Slam as well. Oh, but Amethyst. Oof. Uh. Hmm. Well. I still don't think the stasis engine is good. We're just going to keep getting offered them and saying no. We don't have enough zero costs. We're going to be socketing these. Do I have another good target for Amethyst? Not really. Do I have another good target for Fragmented Gem? I guess Strike for Strike is acceptable. We're playing it last in a turn most of the time anyway, so... The extra damage on that isn't a bad thing. We don't put Tourmaline in Strike for Strike because it doesn't work that way. The Thorns come after the, the self-hit, unfortunately. I know I pointed this out in previous episodes, but I never know when uh, new people are coming in to watch. I don't think any of these are good in Suspension, honestly. But I do think the Shiv is fine in Strike for Strike. Uh, the only other consideration would be Pick Up Rhapsody, but I'm not going to I'm not going to dig for gems here. We could find another thing anyway. Maybe we get a Bobble Burst or an Exploit Gems here. See, so yeah, I'll take the Frag Gem. We'll put it into Strike for Strike and we'll be happy about it, I think. Uh, let's go this way. We're not in any HP danger, so after this fight we'll decide how many question marks we want to take. Although I'm probably just going to keep taking fights since that powers me up the most. Okay. I'm going to keep uh, Amethyst. Since we full block this turn. Okay. <laughs> uh, let's play Suspension, actually. Hmm. Interesting. So I do want to play Defend Strike for Strike. We don't have to enter defensive mode now, so I'm going to put this in. We're going to do it like this. Yeah, now we get that out next turn, guaranteed. Uh, I guess we don't need... We might still need Amethyst. It would depend on what they're doing next turn. I don't know what they're going to do. It's somewhat random. He did attack, okay. Um, I... I do have to play this to full block. This will be 10, and then this will be 13. So yeah, we need that at 12 or lower. Or I guess 13 or lower. This is about to detonate, so we should probably do this this turn. So this is zero energy. We want to play four energy worth. So I guess we give up one defend this turn. That's fine. So we're playing these five cards. What order are we playing them in? 
We could reroute the frag gem. Eh. How about we reroute the stasis strike since it's so expensive? That kind of makes sense. We we also have a bunch of defense coming up, so yeah. Okay, is she gonna heal? Yes. Thorns is good. This is 14 damage. Not enough to kill. We don't have to enter defensive mode here, so I'm not going to. We don't have to worry about her attacking next turn. If he attacks next turn, he's dead. So, yeah, we're gonna do it like this. We're gonna even just throw Spirit Shield into Stasis at this point. Hmm. So, do we construction form? I guess we do. We win the fight if we do that. Don't want to think about that too much. Uh. Guess we still throw that in as well. We'll gain two strength a turn for the next few turns. Next two turns, actually, and then we'll gain four strength a turn after. Yes. Uh, this is going to be a buffer turn. Because we are frail. We'll just count this one. I don't think she's attacking again next turn. She attacks very slowly. In fact, I don't think she can do it twice in a row. Okay, goodbye. Time Capacitor. Uh, we already have a Stasis Strike. I don't want to really add more cards to the deck, if I can avoid it. Stasis Strike is slow, but, you know, the more cards we put into Stasis, the faster we go through our deck. And then the more we're able to put cards into Stasis and gain more Stasis slots. So I think we're good without this. I still don't think we need Walker Claw, especially with the pickup of our Frag Gem. And, uh, this was definitely correct to take earlier. Piercing Hide still no. Yeah, we're gonna keep taking fights. Interesting. Uh, can't block the second hit, so I guess it's just gonna be construction form of future plans here. And we're gonna put Twin Slam in. Because very low chance of them attacking turn three. Of course we cannot enter defensive here. Maybe I should have taken damage. Eh. Nah. We're gonna take two here and then we'll be fine. Yeah, we'll put strike in. Suspension. I guess polybeam since we don't have any strength yet. We get under defensive for two turns, I think that's fine. And I'll put the vulnerable down. Grab this for a couple turns from now. Or I guess immediately. Or I guess it doesn't matter. Wow, double explosive pot. Hey, gem cannon's back. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six. Plus future ones. Still kind of, eh. Six is still not very many. With vulnerable and some strength, that goes to 90 damage, damage minimum plus 18 per strength. Sorry, 18 per... For two strength. So only nine for strength. Except it doesn't even work that way because of rounding. So yeah, it would be 18 every two strength. It's a lot of damage, but I think we're good without this. Another temporal strike? No. Piercing hide. 
No. Alright, last fight. We have a pantograph, so we are more than good enough for champ here. Go for the guy below CHP. Throw a defend into stasis. We already had this fight this game, didn't we? It can happen again, but it's strange. Um, okay, so what are we putting into stasis here? Uh, that. That is what we are putting into stasis. Alright, now we're going to do this. Please hit the left one. Thank you. And I'm going to play this, and we're going to throw a stasis strike into stasis. Goodbye buffers. There's a lot of damage. This is 28. 16 is 44. Wow. Don't have to worry about self-damage whenever you're killing something. Oh, nothing's coming out of stasis. Hmm. Oh, but thankfully we have that. Oh, but also we have this. Gosh. Alright. Prismatic spray. Is that good? We have three loose gems. Um, I still have plans for all of these gems, though. We don't have any strong comboing gems, like with decks or wards or anything like that. So I don't really see a reason to take this. I guess it would be something for Pick of Rhapsody, but that's still a lot of fights we have to go through with gems. I guess it's still possible. I don't know if we need to do it, though. It's a three times attack, that's still pretty good. It will be a dead card for champ. Unless I forcibly socket these into it. I really want to put Amethyst in Twin Slam, though. I guess I could make a case for Tourmaline Fragmented Gem to go into that instead of one of these other ones. Yeah, that's not so bad, I suppose. It also gives us like a good dump in case we decide to mine again with the pick and then just don't get good ones. We already did kind of not get good ones. Well, okay, we got a good one and then a bad one. Sure. I think this is the first prismatic spray of the series. Alright, Amethyst going into Twin Slam, like I said. I really like putting Amethyst in Twin Slam because by itself it's only um, two block unless you have a multi-hit. Uh, so putting in Twin Slam makes it way, way better against multi-hits where it's already good. And in the times where it's bad, it still blocks for four. So, brings up its worst times and, uh, makes it better at what it's already doing at. What it's already doing. Which order should I do this in? This is greenish, this is purple. This is... Here I am, just trying to figure out the aesthetic of my prismatic spray. So the hot pink color is not... doesn't really match with anything else. Oh well. Good enough. This only... Uh, I, I can't believe that they buffed the base damage, but didn't do anything to the upgrade. Such a worthless upgrade. Um, I could mine right now, but then I'd have to go through several fights with free gems again. Maybe now it's time for a curl-up upgrade. Maybe it's time for the polybeam upgrade. That makes more sense. Hmm. Oh, no, the priming shot upgrade. That's the one. Defensive mode. Okay, we made it to champ. It's only been an hour 15. Wow. We've really been trucking through this. Uh, yeah, Twin Slam, uh, Amethyst already doing things. Right? I want to play Stasis Strike. But I also want to play Future Plans. Maybe I just play this once then. Yeah, we still we have plenty of HP. Let's just um. Let's just 
do this. I can even put Time Bomb into Stasis. We can't put Second Slam in. But this could create a, a pretty good combo. See, I'll do that. Why not? This also means no more Vulnerable. We still need to scale up our block anyway. Or our, our damage. So the Vulnerable's not really relevant right now. Uh, okay. I'm not going to use Spheric Shield here either. Although Face Slap does make us vulnerable for next turn, I'm not 100% convinced that we get attacked next turn. Let me look up Champ's pattern real quick. Because I know that uh, his taunt, the thing that debuffs you and nothing else, uh, comes every four turns, but I don't know when the first one is. Uh, so this fire. Okay, the champ. Always uses taunt every four turns. Does it start on turn four then? I suppose that means it starts on turn four. Which means next turn could be anything. Except for another face slap. Moves cannot be used twice in a row, correct. Um, he, uh, Chimp also has the uh, buff turn, which he doesn't do damage. He either gives himself metallicize or strength, since we're on a 19 and above. Um, Champ will be buffing def uh, metallicize twice before buffing any strength. But it's always the same buff turn for all of that. So we don't know what he's doing next turn. I don't want to waste a Spheric Shield on a potential buff. Uh, so if we do get attacked next turn and we can't defend against it, well, I get, actually we have gear up because we only defend 10 this turn. We take four. Yeah, that's fine. Do I want defend in stasis? Yes. Champ attacks frequently. A lot of the first phase is just blocking when he hits and scaling up. Okay, there's the buff turn. Awesome, we got construction form too, which is great. Uh, please give me... okay. Well, I can't cancel this, so... We're not going to be able to put something into stasis. That being said, everything in our hand is strikes and defense, so I don't care. <laughs> uh, I guess we do defend again. I wonder if we're going to be able to line up Red Candle with the split. Quite possibly not. And there's his taunt turn, which makes us frail and weak, if I'm not mistaken? Or is it vulnerable and weak? No, face slap makes us uh, frail. This is going to be vul vulnerable and weak, I think. Because I think we're always vulnerable in this fight, pretty much. Hmm. We only have one strength right now. The thorns is still relevant here because of the strike for strike, so I'm going to do that. But I want to play a defend first. Oh, this also puts us into defensive. Oh, I forgot. I don't want to enter defensive right now. I have other brace cards for that next turn. Plus the shield spikes. We won't be frail either, so yeah. Um, I guess that means we... yeah, we do. We block with the... the not free defend. Okay. And I am going to keep save... I think I'm going to not play si Time Bomb here. I'm going to put Priming Shot into Stasis? Or no, maybe it's... Uh, maybe it is defend. He won't have strength next turn. We will be vulnerable. I think he can still attack for 27. We'll have... 19... 22? Okay. Oh wait, no, he won't be frail. So it'll be... we'll walk anyway. Yeah, there's a 27. Um... Oh, we get permanent thorns from this. Cool. Uh, I guess we'll play a defend and curl up. 
it hit the other defend. Uh, okay. Orb walk. Please attack me. Okay. Face slap is back. Oh, I thought we were going to be able to block it. I was mistaken. Um... I regret asking you to attack me. Because uh, now we lose a buffer. Oh well. Uh, now I will use Time Bomb, though. Get us an extra strength faster. We'll save this for next turn, I suppose. We are going to be frail again, though. Also, Champ is starting to come into range of... We can put this back. Well, if we don't draw a Twin Slam here... Yeah. Let's just put that back, then. Get an extra strength out of it. It's also not split yet. Doesn't split yet. Looks like we are going to be able to line up Soulburn, which is really nice. What's coming up again? Yeah, we're going to need every defend we have, I think. So there's his second metallicize, which means every buff turn for the rest of the fight is going to be strength. Which means we need to speed things up. We can start by playing Orb Walk and Twin Slam. We split him this turn, and then next turn he... Um, Cleanses debuffs, but not before Soulburn goes off, since that goes off at the beginning of... at the end of my turn. Oh man, we're doing so much damage. We're 11 strength. And a ship. Um, okay. We don't need to block for two turns, so I'm gonna just throw the defend in there. Looks like we are going to be vulnerable for the execute turn. Unless we can kill right now. Looks like we can. Yeah, easy peasy. Champ fight dude, just be like that. It, ooh, exploit gems. That looked weird to me for some reason. Maybe it was because it only has two? I know it. I know it's always had two, but... Or maybe I'm just not used to the new art. It is nice new art. I like it. Right. What is this one again? That's a reference to something I don't remember. Uh, oh, this is a Star Wars thing, isn't it? Yeah, I, th I think that's what that is. The droids that roll in and have shields. I think it was during the prequels, or maybe the Clone Wars. I don't know that much about Star Wars, I just know some things from the internet. Uh, anyways, uh, <laughs> Exploit Gems, really good with our pick, should we choose to use it two more times. But also a second Spirit Shield is really, really hard to ignore. I feel like, since we have the Prismatic Spray already and other open gem slots, we should just fill those up and take the strong thing. So I'm going to take the strong thing. Oh, interesting. Sneko Eye. I was not thinking about that, but we have so many two costs. We get a lot of value out of it. Most notably, the downsides, though, are Twin Slam, Future Plans, and Suspension Plus. Those will be harder to play than usual. Uh, the whole reason I upgraded this so early was because we had an anchor and it would be easy to play, but Sneko Eye makes that inconsistent. Uh, one nice thing, though, is that we have four energy, so that does make the randomized cost a little bit better for us. We're not using Wanderbots. I don't think. Well, with a Stasis Strike... I don't think we've been filling up our stasis slots so fast that we can't use it. All three of these are energy, in a way. Very interesting. I think Sneko-Eye's upsides weigh, uh, outweigh the downsides. I think Future Plans... Actually, Future Plans gets a lot worse with Sneko, doesn't it? Because randomized costs means you're going to be playing your cheap cards most of the time and not saving them. So then you end up putting a bunch of expensive cards into stasis. That being said, it does mean that we get to keep. Uh, it does mean that we get to fill up our stasis slots more. We could even use it as like a garbage disposal for a while, um, until those cards start coming out and make and becoming free. And stasis strike will be discounted most of the time too. 
half the time. I guess it's some. I guess half the time it's either the same cost or more expensive. Orb walk, I guess, is kind of a downside because we want it to be expensive when we put into stasis, but it's still two or three costs half the time. And the other time we can, and in most hallway fights, we can just play it. I feel like this is very good for Snekoi. Like, even with the downsides, it's just pertaining to how we play our deck. Uh, so it's, I think it's mostly up to user skill. Uh, meanwhile, these have universal downsides that you have to work around in a meta way, rather than just in a combat way. You have to plan accordingly for the rest of the run. You know, with so many expensive cards, it's very possible that we just draw a bunch of our expensive cards on turn one sometimes. Like our Spirit Shields, Construction Form. Along with our future plans we want to play. And that's not good if we don't have some kind of... If we don't have Snack Alive with the randomized costs, discounting them most of the time. Although I guess we don't really want to play Spirit Shield all the time anyways, but more draw on Snack Alive is better for that as well. Time Bomb gets better, Stasis Strike gets better. You can always remove Suspension if it gets it, if it gets too bad. I don't like Active Draw like Suspension on Sneko anyways, because it's randomized cost by itself, and then it's also you're drawing something at a randomized cost, so you don't know whether you're going to be able to use it. Um... Is there anything else I have to consider here? Shield Spikes is better. Curl Up we would need an upgrade for. Stasis Strike gets used more often as well because there are faster draws. We could maybe even like kill things really, really fast. And so we just play all our cards because of uh, Snekawai. Let's consider Wanderbots for a second. We have a Future Plans on turn 1 all the time. I don't think we've been... We haven't been keeping stuff in stasis so long that we've been making use of a 4th slot a lot. Especially because sometimes everything comes out at once. Of stasis. And then all the slots are empty. That happened. I think that happened the last couple fights. So... Being a little bit slower with our stasis growth is not necessarily too bad. And the fifth energy is useful here with our expensive cards. We do have a lot of useful one costs to go with our useful two costs. And I'm thinking like if we have a turn with two two costs and one one cost or a one cost and three sorry a two cost and three one costs, uh, that happens pretty frequently. And the fifth energy would be great for that. You could probably go with either here. I feel like this could end up punishing us, though. Whereas this is just... You already, like... If you get a, if you get a bad turn, you take a big hit, and then... That doesn't happen for the rest of the run. So, I'm gonna go with the Sneko Eye. Awakened One. We only have three powers, that's good. See these shops here. We need green key elite? Okay. We have a guaranteed shop here? Interesting. Double shop so close to each other I don't think is a great idea. So I think our path would be like this. We still get two campfires, two elites. That's pretty good. Like, there's a chance that we get like a bad shop. And you know, don't have the gold to spend, but we have the guaranteed Act 4 shop as well, so I think we just... I think we just take the one that we're forced into in the middle of the Act and avoid these two. Oh, I just noticed this was a path too. In fact, this is slightly better because the event is one floor later. And that's better to me because you can make a more informed decision on whatever is there. 
could even go this way and take another question mark. I like question marks in Act 3 a lot. But, uh, either way, I think this is better. Uh, we get this question mark a little bit later, and we have the option to take another one. I'm going to go here, and then I'm going to take a break. So, I'll see you in just a second. And we're back. Our first fight with Snekoi. Oh yeah, gear up is always going to cost one because it's placed into our hand rather than drawn. Since uh, Snekoi only can, uh, changes cost of cards whenever you uh, draw them. <clears throat> so in order to full block this turn, <clears throat> Twin Slam twice will take it down to 12 with a defend, that should be enough. If I want to do something like Strike for Strike though, I'd have to enter defensive, but that costs two energy as well. Um, I think our safe play this turn is Twin Slam, Twin Slam, Defend, Future Plans, and Curl Up. And whatever happens, happens, I guess. So, let's do it. There is so much text on this card. It looks a lot smaller uh, here, though. I don't... Because this is ethereal. Okay. Um, anyway. Don't hit gear up? Cool. Four cost card. Uh, four turns of card. I think those were words. Uh. Okay. Um. So we do have to think a little bit harder than usual before playing zero cost cards. Because we have future plans, and if we want to save one of those cards for next turn, uh. We have to not play it. <clears throat> that being said, there are two defends here, so that means we're guaranteed to play one. Because if we want to put one in stasis, we can just do the other one. I could enter defensive with gear up. I think Spheric Shield might be safer, though. We don't have any strength yet. Can't hurt to have thorns, though, I guess. Maybe Priming Shot? Oh, wait, Priming Shot enters defensive. Um... We will have 15 block, we can play Defend, and we can play the other damage card. Hmm. We have Construction Form coming up, but I don't know if that's safe enough. Because uh, we do need block for next turn, too, so with Defensive Mode, we can carry block over. Um, maybe it's Spheric Shield Priming Shot. <laughs> yeah, let's do that. That way we have Defensive for the next three turns, including this one. Do I want to put this into... There's a chance that we get Orb Block or Temporal Strike and are able to play them. These are going to take a while to come out, so sure, we'll put that in. Twenty-six. Okay. So this only costs one, which is nice. I do want to play this every time, though. <clears throat> I think it's Temporal Strike, Strike, Spheric Shield. Just stay in defensive. This fight's almost over. I guess we'll put Reroute in. Yeah, there's Orb Block Plus. Although we did get Suspension at one cost, so... If this had been a longer fight, I would have put it into Stasis, and we still would have gotten 4 Strength. I guess, you know what, uh, since it's upgraded... Uh, it being lower cost isn't always bad. I'd say that maybe zero cost was a little bit low, but one cost still giving us four strength is very acceptable. Okay. Oh, a second orb block for consistency. I would not mind a second orb block, I don't think. How's our attack density looking? We have 12 attacks out of 25 cards. We do have to deal with snack Y costs, and also we have only one AoE card. So against Repto, we might have a little bit of trouble. You know, I don't think we actually need the scaling between Construction Form and the Orb Block we have, so let's not add more setup. Uh, what about that, though? Is there any world where we just pick up a Dexterity Gem? What was our route again? I know we had to take the super... 
we get the choice here. First campfire isn't until after the chest, which means we'll have a loose dex gem for an elite fight and maybe a hallway fight. Oh, also all of these fights. Yeah, I'm going to say no to that. Okay. Two buffing. Also, turn two, they can do their multi-attack. I think this is a defensive mode. Entry. Hmm. So future plans cost two. I'm kind of tempted to just do suspension on time bomb. And then play priming shot. Now let's do future plans like normal. We'll still put this in though. All right. So that's um, 34. We have 27. We only need seven block. Sphere shield, I think, might be a little bit too much. We don't know for a fact that we need to um, gain a ton of block here. That being said, our real only option uh, to do otherwise is play shield spikes, because defend only blocks for five, unless you want to take two the, for some reason. Um, let's also do this, because it's free. <laughs> Maybe it's not so bad to do Spheric Shield. We gain 20 block, which means we have 13 left over for next turn, plus 10 is 23. That's... Oh, with a draw like that, that's actually kind of reasonable. So yeah, I will do that. Come to think of it. And screw it, let's do this. The Soul Burn making the animation take longer is weird. Oh, now Time Bomb's going to accelerate these. That'll be nice. Yeah, we got attacked for a lot here. Ooh, free construction form. That's very nice. Uh, Twin Slam. Oh, I was going to say here because this has 8 Soul Burn already, but Time Bomb is going to hit that. It's going to hit it hard, actually, because of uh, its damage glitch. So how much is this? We have 1 Strength. Invulnerable, so that's... 16 times 1.5 times 1.5. Um, I think it's 36. I guess that means I should have reversed the order here. <laughs> 34. I wonder how exactly the order works for that. Of course, I did the most expensive one in hand. Stasis Strike, I think, is going to be very, very nice here. <laughs> Free time, Capacitor. You're funny, game. Spheric Shield. Maximum we're getting hit for next turn is 11. Well, I guess... Not, no, that's not the maximum. The minimum. Uh, it's still not very much. Can I actually kill this? 7, 14, 21, no, 7, 16, 25, <coughs> plus 19, 25 and 19 is 44, so not quite. This is 3 energy, no, 2 energy. So we can't use suspension either. We do have explosive pots. Actually, if we keep these for up, we don't have to worry too much about our deck. 
Oh, right, we don't have anything in stasis, so this doesn't actually refund an energy. That's fine. We didn't really have a way to play our second energy other than gear up. I can keep it for next turn. I think that's a good idea. Because the turn after will be a larger attack from Spirit Shield. Although... Oh, double Spirit Shield? Okay, and then Time Bomb? Heck yeah. Um, and I guess I'll put the damage in, since we have two turns of defensive mode, and we can enter again with Hero Curl Up. We could also just kill both. I'm liking the uh, Sneko I pick up. Cultist Potion. I don't think we need Cultist Potion for any of the upcoming fights. I think we have enough for Giant Head. We got two buffers, that's pretty huge. Repto, we definitely want the explosive pots for. I think having both is the safest way. Resilient Plate. Sneko Eye is an interesting combo, but not always a good one. Removing Confusion. We are a little bit further now. We could end up taking two or three fights before our campfire. And so the emerald might be better than it was before, at least. We do want to mine at the next fire, though, correct? We'll go through two fights with floating gems, and then we figure out how to socket them there. How many open slots do we have? Right, I sorted by type. Let's do this again. Um, one, two, three, four. That's enough for two mines if I decide to do that. Do I have upgrades I want? Hmm. Right, most of these are damage upgrades. I guess Polybeam is a prime target, but we also have a campfire in Act 4. So not really. We could, we could actually mine two times. We could get better things than emeralds. Um... Generally speaking, though, what about specifically speaking? We have four defends and a shield spikes. Spheric shields don't really matter. Nah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna skip this. I was considering it before because, you know, a little bit more defense didn't hurt. Couldn't hurt, but I don't think we have enough to benefit from a dexterity. And also, taking debuff reduction is kind of a risk in and of itself right now. We are at plenty of HP right now, so I'm going to lose 10 HP for these. Um, the bomb. That's very interesting, actually, with Snekoi. It's a very decent amount of damage. I don't know if it's necessary, though. The delayed aspect is not good against Repto. And otherwise, it's just... Uh, its main... Um, its main draw is that it's a uh, area of effect, large area of effect damage. But against single targets, it's passable in the late game anyway 40 damage is like if you if you think about it 40 damage uh, against one target is like two carnages uh, except it also can't be affected by vulnerable so maybe a bit less maybe it's like an upgraded carnage with vulnerable yeah that's 42 that's close enough apotheosis uh free strength and a, a lot of free strength to everything i wouldn't mind that actually uh some Five more block to these, three more to this, and all of our defends. Curl up getting an upgrade is good. Yeah, I'd probably take an, uh, an Apotheosis. In fact, I could just take it from this one. I know I'm not going to take these two. Uh, Enlightenment. Enlightenment's Nekoi would be great if it always cost zero. But we're not guaranteed that in the slightest. So if Enlightenment costs three and we use it. We have a bunch of one costs, and we can only play one of them. So... If we, if we draw to two, we can only play two of them. Uh, I guess one or zero costs, it's fine. We do have four energy. Also, I noticed at the end of the last recording, uh, before the break, I mean, 
Uh, I don't know if I, I don't remember if I mentioned this, but I feel like I have not been feeling a downside of this at all. I have not been noticing it. And that's great. That means it's been a great pickup. Do I take the enlightenment? I don't think... I've tried this with Snekomai before, and I don't think it's been very good. I think it adds a little bit of inconsistency to the deck, uh, where it would otherwise be good. Maybe if you're really desperate to make sure that your deck doesn't start falling apart. Uh, I'm not really that desperate, though. Alright. I will pay 10 HP for an Apotheosis. That's... At this point, that's very fair. Okay. Suspension's free, let's play it. Oh, there's Apotheosis, very nice. So, what are we thinking here? What do we put into Stasis? We're just going to play Apotheosis. We have four energy this turn. Uh, it doesn't... I don't think it makes sense to play Twin Slam this turn, because it costs four energy. So that would be our entire turn. I think Reroute Strike for Strike is smarter. The only problem about putting Twin Slam into Stasis is that it will take four turns to come out. Uh, I guess three if we play Time Bomb. Maybe that's not so bad then. I'll do it. You know what? Maybe I put the Defend into Stasis with Reroute. Yeah, let's do that. Rather than Strike for Strike. I guess we'll put this into. I am kind of hoping. Oh yeah, Apotheosis affects gear up too. That's pretty good. That's a pretty big thing. And I did draw Time Bomb. That's pretty cool. Uh, also Spheric Shield. We have 30 incoming damage right now. I don't really want to play this without Strength or Vulnerable, but I think we're going to just have to. So let's get this out. Let's use Curl up to put War Block in Stasis. Can enter Defensive here? Sure. That's 18 out of our 30. I think we just do Spheric Shield for another turn. Because all this passive damage really adds up fast. Alright, we're going to get our Strike out this turn. We get Stasis Strike. Interesting. So we get Polybeam, but we only have one Strength. We still have 30 incoming damage. This is free. We're in defensive mode, so it doesn't make sense to save it, so play it. Let's do shield spikes, stasis strike. And I guess we'll put polybeam in so that we get it out when we have more strength. Also, it's the one that would take the least time. Alright, now we got twin slam. And twin slam before temporal strike, even though this gives strength, because the vulnerable will do more damage. Let's get rid of that, too. Alright, now we play this, and there we go. Oh, it's just a kill. Great. Awesome. Uh, skip these. Alright, now the question. Do we want an extra fight or an event? Act 3 events can be very good. Or you could get Falling and get some pretty bad options. My luck with falling has never been that bad. Although I wonder if that's because I don't... I wonder if that's because other people remove strikes and defense more than I do. I'm kind of basing this off of my Reddit, ex my Reddit experience with how I see uh, posts there, but maybe that's not a great reference because they're going to post um, the most extreme things that happen to them. Uh, and I mean that comparatively. I don't mean that like a... Uh, Whoa, this is so crazy kind of way, you know? <laughs> um, but very notably, there are Double Orb Walkers and Mind Bloom, which both give rare relics. I think at this point, I do value that over a single hallway fight. The chance of this, more than a single hallway fight. So I am going to go for this. If this is a hallway fight, then we get our rare chance up for our uh, Elite anyway. So let's do it. It's double orb walkers. Great. And we do have the defense for this. Sometimes Guardian, uh, I remember from some of my past uh, experiences that Guardian can sometimes struggle against these things. 
Okay. Well, we, we're definitely playing Future Planes. I don't think this is the best starting hand. I will say that much. We might have to not play Apotheosis. Because if we play Apotheosis, we're down to two energy. I want to play Twin Slam twice. I want to play the Defend. Uh, that reduces by nine. So we're taking 32 right now. Minus nine is 23. Um, I think that's as good as we're going to get it. If we did Apotheosis Defend Twin Slam, that would be eight, ten. Okay, so one more. It would give us one more block. And then we can't play Time Bomb for a bunch of damage either. I think the damage is more important here. Especially with the damage glitch. Um, so yeah, we're going to do that. 31. Okay. I could just put this into stasis, that makes sense. Alright. So we can enter defensive here. Oh wait, no, it's 11? Wow. Wow. Uh, I guess we did get gear up curl up though. It's not amazing though. Uh, but with everything else that we've just drawn, it looks like we can do at the worst gear up curl up suspension. Uh, gear up curl up. So if we use suspension to draw a card, we're not losing anything actually. Okay, polybeam. Oh, good thing we have buffers. <laughs> I think we kill one this turn as well. Yeah, strike for strike. Or better yet, priming shot? This is 10? 10 plus 10, 20. Uh, we did just lose both our buffers. We could do this. This is 42, that's exact. And also we get permanent thorns. So actually priming shot here would kill with the thorns in play. Let's do it. Oh wait, we already had three thorns from defensive. That's still fine. You know, sacrificing a little bit of HP here is not a big deal. I could just play this. This thing has done 367 damage, wow. Tori, that's pretty nice. Temporal Shield plus, no, I don't think. Charge Core plus, with Snekoi? For even more, for more passive draw. And at randomized cost, it does more than usual. I'll, I'm willing to take one, this also helps with our attack density against the potential Reptomancer, which is no longer potential. So Stasis Strike here uh, guarantees this gets killed by Mercury Hourglass. We have a Shield Spikes to full block this turn. I think that's fine. So we can let uh, Mercury Hourglass do its thing. We also have Charge Core here. But I want to play future plans. So I think our play is Stasis Strike, Shield Spikes, Future Plans, Polybeam. Although if Polybeam hits one of these, then I can maybe switch targets for Stasis Strike. Let's see what it hits. <laughs> hmm. That doesn't make it easier, unfortunately. Um... You know what? I think I could attack this one with Stasis Strike and then use an Explosive Pot next turn to handle those two and the new the new daggers coming in. I think that's smart. I think we have to use a potion here to guarantee that we do this fight very uh, that we play this fight very well. All right, now we're gonna draw eight cards a turn, which means a little bit more consistency. All right, do we have to use the potion? We have three attacks in hand. We can draw a card. 
But yes, I do think we have to use one. Let's use the old one. I think that's the old one. It's in the left slot. I don't actually know for sure. Hmm. So this is not enough to kill one, so I'd have to use these for it. Do I have enough block for... How much block do I have this turn? This is 20. We can enter defensive for 30. 30, huh? 32, I suppose? And that's 4 energy, but we get an energy back from Temporal Strike, so we can play Suspension too, I guess? All three of our attacks rolled at zero, so that's cool. Okay, we don't have enough to full block this plus a dagger, so we are going to just do this. Um, right, this doesn't hurt me back. Do I want to put this into stasis, though, or something else? I am just going to put this into stasis, I think. Okay, so we have five energy. One, two, three, four, and suspension makes five. So let's draw a card. Construction form. Okay. Uh. Hmm. Well, I definitely want to play that. I might have to use a buffer, though. Because, like I said, this is 10, this is 20, 30. That's 35. They're, we're being attacked for 32. So yeah, we just end up losing a buffer. I think that means we play Construction Form, Spheric Shield, Curl Up. And block a hit with Spheric Shield. And then use the buffer. And then we can save another turn of defensive for whenever we need it. So that's 3 energy. I guess we put Defendant into Stasis then. We'll have two energy... Wait, I said this was three energy? This is two energy. We'll have two energy left, but I don't... But the, the, the uh, defend doesn't matter, so... Yeah. Oh, this is a 50-50. Hmm. Oh, well. We haven't drawn Time Bomb yet, so... I think it's fine. Yeah, there's Time Bomb. Apotheosis. So we could play Time Bomb to get this out immediately, but we don't have to, thankfully. Also, that would draw a card. Hmm. Interesting. This is going to be Twin Slam, Twin Slam. We're going to put Orb Walk into Stasis, I believe. Because we can enter Defensive with other means. And we have a buffer. So... All right. Twenty-five. Oh yeah, because that got upgraded, and we have five strength. Very nice. Seventeen, twenty-two. Okay. I'm noticing we almost have a full hand here. Uh, I am going to have to enter defensive to block this turn. So let's just play gear up now. 14, 15, this is 9 times 2. We're looking for 20 or higher. And it looks like this just has to be Stasis Strike and Strike for Strike. I mean, I would love a Strike dummy here. Uh, what do we want to reroute? I guess Stasis Strike? That makes sense. It's a zero-cost attack that does 26 damage next turn. Or 25, depending on whether we can block or have to use the buffer. Probably going to have to use the buffer. Yeah, let's just do that. Um, and then we'll just do some more damage. And maybe we could have just ended the fight instead, but I guess it's fine. Or maybe we still can. Yeah. Okay, cool. Blank card. Ooh, actual gems. Another garnet is interesting. We don't have a great socket for it, though. Yeah, all three of these are attacks, and suspension we might just get rid of. Aquamarine, uh, another kind of a weird one. We don't have any dexterity.
Hmm. You know, it's weird. Aquamarine got so much worse whenever it got uh, changed to uncommon. You can't plan into it anymore, since you can't talk it into a bunch of cards. So now it's just a three block. It just, you're just adding three block to a card. I wonder if you could get away with making a, an upgraded crystal ward. I'm not going to complain about it being uncommon, though. Uh, this is not a complaint. I think it was right to get it out of common. It's just not feeling very useful to me right now. I should ask the opinions of people in the uh, Discord about that. But yeah, I think with our, our pick, we're still going to just skip these for now. This is not worth taking this neck out. Even though it is upgraded. Ooh. Uh, <laughs> what the heck? I don't know. Um, I'm not going to buy it. That's not worth it. It's three damage on... I guess we have like every strike card that Guardian has, but it's only three damage for each of those. I still haven't tested whether this is three or six, but I think it's just three. Uh, also, we have some other good relics here. Uh, artifact Strip. Um, also, uh, the times that we don't Artifact Strip, we can stack it with Twin Slam sometimes. Uh, Bottled Black Hole is great. Just start with the card in Stasis. In fact, that might be good with Suspension. Uh, get that turn two guaranteed to be a zero cost card. Uh, means that one extra draw with Sneko isn't actually that bad. Or we could just throw Orb Walk in there. That may even just be smarter. Do we have another shop coming up? No, and it, in fact, that's guaranteed. Because there's no question marks either. So we can just spend our gold here. This is. 333. This makes 300, 433. Sadistic nature is interesting. We have Twin Slam. Oh, and Red Candle. Holy shit, Red Candle. Is that worth it? I guess. I guess that's technically five strength. Do I need a flat five strength for randomized cost? I. I mean, Orb Walk. The Orb Walk I passed up earlier was technically five strength if I upgraded it. And put it into stasis at two or higher cost. But this is uh, pretty much unconditional. I think that's a huge buff to me. But is it better than either of the relics? You know what? We don't need artifact strip. We have red candle. Yeah, we can just artifact strip that way. So we can forego the bag of marbles. We can take Sadistic Nature, uh, Bottled Black Hole. Uh, and I think we still have enough for card remove. This is 183, 166. 183 plus 166 plus 100 for the card remove is 449. So we can't afford all three of those. Uh, do I want any of these cards? Body Crash? With Snekawai, Body Crash gets more interesting, but I don't think we need it. We're doing a lot of strength things. Don't want Crystal Shiv. Crystal Shiv is significantly better than uh, Crystal Ward here. Recover, Metallicize. Yeah, I think we, I think we do this. Let's bottle the Orb Walk as well, I think. Or is it the Charge Core? We actually have a few um, options here. Wasn't really thinking about it, but... Orb Walk is fine. We get that strength going immediately. Charge Core is fine, because then we start getting uh, passive draw for the first two turns. Suspension is okay, because then it comes out at zero cost and we draw an extra card on turn two. Sadistic Nature to get that in play on turn two, guaranteed for zero cost. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is that the stasis doesn't tick down on turn one. So, normally this would come out in one turn because it's a zero cost, but uh, since we start on turn one, it would actually be on turn two that it comes out. So you have to add two to the cost. So if we did something like Apotheosis, that wouldn't come out until turn four. 
or construction form out until turn five. So we have to keep that in mind. So yeah, it's either orb walk. I think we don't do charge core because we want it to have a higher cost so that we draw more with it over time. I think the draw consistency is more important than getting it early because we already have Sneko Eye. Uh, Sadistic Nature getting in play so fast. Actually, that's... We just talked about how that's effectively 5 strength. In Orb Walk, we're trying to... We're, we would be putting it in there for 5 strength as well. So, putting Sadistic Nature in would just be faster. Okay. Uh, I think that is better su than Suspension 2, even though this is okay. This is going in. I've, I don't think I've taken Sadistic Nature in this series so far, let alone Bottled Black Hold it. Anyway, uh, what are we doing next? With Apotheosis, these defends are a lot better than usual, and I might actually need them to preserve buffer against the heart. Uh, also, I have good attack density already. We just fought Repto, so we're not fighting them again. I think I can get rid of a strike here, especially since I didn't buy Strike Dummy. Alright. Let's see what relic we're skipping. Frozen egg. Uh, yeah, at this point in the game, that's fine, I think. So, are we still mining? I, I didn't even think about the upgrade. You know, if we drop Apotheosis in the first two turns, we already get that. So we don't actually have to upgrade anymore. We have the Apotheosis, we can just mine. According to this, uh... According to this plan I've been thinking about. Yeah, I'm gonna do it. Alright, what do we get? We get, do get a Garnet, and we get a Sapphire. Interesting. Okay. Oh, right, we have Blank Card. So I just got a free Apotheosis. Okay. And that does affect cards and stasis. Uh, that's why... I, I guess that was implied by me saying if I get Apotheosis on turn one. But yeah, it does work. Which is cool. So what do we want to do here? We don't want to play Spheric Shield this early. Um, the earliest attack... The, the earliest big attack is turn four at this ascension. I think it. I think Giant Head's timer actually starts at turn starts at five turns, and you get you get first attacked on turn six. But there's two ascensions that uh, lower that turn, if I'm not mistaken. There's a eighteen, which is the harder things, and then I think also a four, no a three. I think that attack also makes it uh, a lower timer, but don't quote me on that. Okay, so this gains me an extra energy. I think we do Future Plans, Temporal Strike, and then two strikes. Yeah, I'm just going to go with that. And what are we going to put into Stasis here? I guess Defend? That comes out on the exact turn we want it to, right? No, the turn after. Uh, Spirit Shield being a zero cost would come out next turn, and then we just have to juggle it over and over with... Uh, what do you call it? Future plans. I guess I could put gear up into stasis and then have that come out for free in two turns. Now, I want this to be one cost in case we get attacked next turn and we have other uh, brace cards in hand. We did not get attacked. Go figure. Uh, this apotheosis is worthless now. Hmm. I think we do want to put defense into stasis, though. So, we could play one here. Oh, wait, no, we can reroute one. But I also want to reroute stasis strike. Hmm. I was thinking reroute one, put the other into stasis with future plants, and then next turn maybe we enter defensive with the two defense, plus a spheric shield, or... Whatever we, whatever we can enter defensive with. 
Yeah, let's just stick with that. Let's, um... Put that in. Alright, we... And of course, because, uh... Giant Head attacked twice. Or, sorry, debuffed twice, we get attacked this turn. Uh, Orb Walk looks like it's just going to be two strength. And uh, twi Twin Slam hits three times with Sadistic Nature. That's awesome. Alright. Let's get our defensive mode going. Spheric Shield. This will give us 35 block in total, because we'll get another 10 block next turn. So, we have a full block already. We'll have two block left over. Plus 35 is 37. We need 45. Defend plus we'll do it. Awesome. Uh, suspension plus... Oh, I shuffled the deck. Uh, okay. Well, I guess we're not having Polybeam for a few turns. That's fine, I guess. We full block this turn. Oh, there's all our slimes. We got three out of the four <laughs> from our draw pile. Um... Play the slimes. Uh, we don't. I kind of want to do Garnet reroute Stasis Strike. That leaves us with one energy. I guess we play the slime too, but I also kind of want to play the curl up. <sighs> so I guess that means we forego the Garnet. That's fine. I think. I think saving Stasis Strike with reroute. Wait. Um, yeah, I want to play the curl up so I can enter defensive with Spheric Shield as well for a double defensive and then be able to maybe full block another turn of this before having to use buffers. So yeah, I'll give up the Garnet this turn. Um, we'll do it like this. <laughs> Gain another stasis slot. Put this in, play the slime. Okay. I guess I should have played the slime first. I think we just have a win here, though. Pretty handily. Look at all these zero cost attacks. Sadistic nature going off three times. How much does this do? 130. <laughs> Slow also affects uh, time bomb twice. Ooh. Wow, okay. Time Sifter. Is that even worth it? It's not. Time Sifter is never worth it. Double Future Planes Plus is kind of funny. I think it's overkill. I would take it if I really, really need consistency in its um, cost. Because it ch if I uh, hit three cost on this, I might have to choose between that and another good card, like maybe Apotheosis Construction Form. That's a pretty compelling argument. I'm going to take it. But we do, still do have Anchor on turn one. So we're not giving up too much to have this. We are sacrificing a draw in Awakened One for the rest of the fight, I guess. And yeah, now we have a one cost and two cost future planes. I think we can play Suspension here, just taking a look at the cost of cards in our hand. I'm going to put Orb Walk in. This is 17... 26? Just off. Oh, we can't even play this twice. It's too expensive. Okay. Well, let's just do this then. Wow! What the fuck? I'm not taking 18 here. I'm taking 11. I... wow. <laughs> now, 
That was a 1 in 256 chance. I didn't mean to hit that one, but okay. Uh, Twin Slam. I cannot believe that. Just lost a bunch of HP for nothing. Alright, Pothios this time. Um, and I guess Time Bomb is fine here. Because we have a lot of block. There we go. Alright. Uh, skip these. Well, another charge core. Yes, I will take another one. I think it's powerful enough with Snekoi. Okay, now we gotta decide where to put these. So I did skip that earlier Garnet because I didn't think it had a good target, but now we're stuck with one. Actually, do we, how many, we have one more fight. We could just go with four unsocketed gems and then make it a more informed decision at the next fire. That seems reasonable. I just noticed that we're not going to have any gold for the next shop. We're not going to have enough for a remove. So it looks like I can't get rid of suspension anytime soon. But it was kind of the plan to keep it anyway for a gem. So let's just mine. Uh, another sapphire and a ruby. Okay. And our last fight is transient. Good old transient. Oh, I just played the Future Planes. I don't have to play this one. So that means I could just do Stasis Strike, Polybeam, Strike for Strike, and I think that's enough. 15, 23, 40, exactly. Oh, but we also have um, Mercury Hourglass. And that means we can, most importantly, put Orb Walk into Stasis. So, do I want to play a Sapphire or Gear Up here? I can save Gear Up for later... I don't know what the odds are that the four brace is going to help us more than gear up, but this fight, you have to go fast. And I don't want to have to spend an energy I don't, uh, I'm going to need uh, on a future turn, so let's just go. We'll take the extra six brace. Give me a poppy, is this again? No? Okay. I will take what I am given. I think we absolutely destroy this turn, though. Uh, 15 plus 16 is 31, plus all the sadistic nature procs, yeah. We'll keep this for next turn. I do have to remind myself I have Tori now. I haven't had to use it yet, but I may have to soon. That's nice. I'm going to keep Polybeam for next turn, since I don't need it this turn. Do I just want to play Spheric Shield just in case? Hmm. It will still be vulnerable next turn. This will be another 2 strength, 8. So 12 times 4, 48 plus 20, 68. That's most of the damage. I think we're being attacked for 70 now. Yeah, we're absolutely fine with just Polybeam. Oh, and Apotheosis. Wow. Um, and then we could just block the rest with Buffer. That seems good. Not gonna go for this kill today. I just want to get to the boss. Alright. 
Molotov. I mean, at this point in the game, this might just be better than a fire pot or explosive potion. I'm gonna go with it's better than explosive pot. Uh, don't want these. Alright. This is our final campfire before the boss, so now we get to make our decision. Where do we want all of these gems? Let's maybe start with the sapphire since we have two of them. I think we could definitely throw one of those in prismatic spray. Um, because we don't want vulnerable in it, we don't want strength in it. We want to play that after we gain the vulnerable or strength. So let's do that. Other sapphire. I think this is another case of strike for strike being a card we play last in a turn. Um, however, all three of our gems kind of work against you playing the card last in a turn. Uh, because strike for strike, even the sapphire, you want to enter defensive before strike for strike hits. Then again, it can stack. You can damage yourself for brace and get extra brace, and that'll give you seven total. And that's pretty respectable. I think Vulnerable is the most important one to put before one of these other two. So I think Vulnerable goes in Suspension. Or, or does it? Maybe we don't play it that often to do that. You know what? I am just going to put, um, what do you call it? Uh, Sapphire and Strike for Strike. I think that is correct. So now it's just Garnet and Ruby. If we don't play Suspension that much, then I think the Garnet has to go into Reroute. But then again, it is still set up. I don't think either of these cards are very good. Reroute's obviously better, but I don't think it's by much. Reroute sets up a future turn rather than the, rather than this turn. So Vulnerable could just end up um, whiffing. I don't know which is better. I, I do stand by my decision not to put the Strength or Vulnerable in the other two, but these are not great options left over either. If I have the same energy, if I if I draw these in the same hand and they have the same energy cost, zero cost, it doesn't matter, they're both getting played. Which means that vulnerable would be better here. One cost, I might still be playing suspension to draw a card. Two cost, I'm probably playing reroute, but not much else. Hmm. I guess all things considered, we do put it in suspension, because the cheap costs are where it really matters, and the expensive costs, we're not going to be able to play much else in the hand. So Vulnerable goes in here, and Strength goes in the reroute. And now we recall. Alright. I'm going to have to take another break. Pantograph is nice. Uh, anyways, I'll see you in just a second. And we're back. And we need a plan. Because playing powers does not always go well against Awakened One. We've got four powers in our deck. We've got two future plans, of which we're only going to play one. I think this has to be necessary uh, in order to properly... Oh wait, wait, we have another power, sadistic nature. Hmm. Didn't think about that for Awakened One. Hmm. Uh, we got our two future plans, sadistic nature, construction form, and our orb walk. So the question is, which are necessary? 
How do we beat this guy? The big problem with Guardian against Awakened One is you need consistent defense while you get your setup uh, so that you can actually kill both phases. But you run out of defensive mode and a lot of Guardian's power, at least from my experience, comes from playing powers unless you've created a debuff reduction build. Huh. So is Construction Form a wise play? Well, we are taking damage this turn. And we can't prevent the whole thing if we play Construction Form. But the buffer may help anyway. So is Future Plans Construction Form a good idea here? I don't know. Extra Force Strength will make it harder for us to properly defend. Also, not playing Stasis Strike actually kind of hurts. We could also take damage in order to enter defensive more easily. Maybe we do Future Plans Stasis Strike so that we can uh, keep up with the amount of stasis we need. That being said, if we don't play Construction Form, we need to scale up some other way. Because once we run out of defensive mode, we're going to have some issues. So I feel like we need to kill this quickly. But I'm not sure we can do it. I guess Sadistic Nature also helps. Construction Form is pretty slow. It gives us buffer now, but if we get the multi-attack next turn... Also, we have to deal with these guys. So we could have some issues. I think I'm going to let the construction forms go. Again, I can't save it with future plans. Ethereal cards can't be saved anymore. I could use Molotov on one of these cultists. I could use Fire Potion. I'm probably going to have to use the potions on these. And I don't mind using these ones. These are not high-value potions past this point in the game. So making absolutely certain that we can kill these quickly seems to make sense to me. So in that case, I think it is Future Plans Stasis Strike. And we're going to have to play Sadistic Nature this game, or this fight. Maybe I... Actually, once we play this, this will do 5 damage, but I guess it might be a bit late. Uh, let's see where this hits. Okay, it hit every enemy. Which means I can use this next turn, and we won't have to wait an additional turn for it to work. So, 30 soul burn. Plus 19 is 49. That's exactly full on the cultist? Okay. And we've drawn time bomb already, so it doesn't even matter. Uh, I guess twin slam would be something to keep in mind. Because that applies debuffs to all enemies twice. And then we can play it twice as well. Hmm. That's 20 damage to all enemies, at least. So maybe we don't even play Stasis Strike against... Or maybe we spread out Stasis Strike and the Molotov. That also makes sense. So 20 damage to all, plus... Nineteen? It's thirty-nine. That means we could just play the other Twin Slam on one, and uh, that would fulfill it. Because of the extra soul burn and sadistic nature proc. But again, I don't know when Twin Slam is coming here. Uh, that being said, I think it's still fine to just attack one of these two. I'm going to go for this one. Well, no, I'll do this one. Okay, what card do we save now? Probably not Time Bomb. I think we just keep the defense. We need to juggle our uh, defense. We also need to make use of Tori whenever possible. I think that's going to be completely necessary. Oh, there's Apotheosis. Okay. Uh, Spheric Shield right now is also amazing because next 
turn is going to be the multi-attack. So we're absolutely going to need block for that. He attacked for 12 here. I could also just try to kill these. Or kill this one, I guess. That's more than enough damage. 19 and 14 is 33, so... Do Temporal Strike here. <laughs> then that. Oh, that's right, we have Sadistic Nature. That's fine. We'll block this turn. I think I am going to put Spheric Shield in. We're going to have to use that pretty soon. These Spheric Shields are going to help this fight. That's their free stall turns. Ooh, suspension costs zero. That's nice. We do draw one card from this, so that's fine. Okay, so we did not get Twin Slam, but I can put Charge Core into Stasis. I think at two cost and all the cards we have in hand, that's definitely the play. Also, that happens. Alright, let's see where this hits. Yeah, it's a kill on that one. I like how it goes in order. Okay. So, 48, we have 13. That means we need 35 more. This is 34. We could re-enter defensive with gear up. And then that would definitely be enough. 34, 44, and then we have 19 for next turn. 19 out of 24. That's very acceptable with a defend. Or we could just take the Tori damage. We could do that. Right, we entered defensive already. So this is exact. But since we're in defensive mode, I might as well just play this. Okay. Now we put defend into stasis as well. Uh, I can re-enter defensive with curl up, gear up. So not having a defend in the draw pile is fine. Oh yeah, we don't even need to do that because we take one damage from Tori, and that's it. Okay. I am feeling a lot more confident about this now. My first experience with Awaken 1, or one of the first experiences, did not go very well, so I was just nervous from that. This Twin Slam costing 3 is really bad. But we can wait anyways. 26, what other power did we play? Future Plan Sadistic Nature. Oh, it started with 2. I forgot about that. Oh well. Um... I guess we do enter defensive then. I play Curl Up on Orb Walk and Gear Up and play Stasis Strike. Okay. Because we're 7 damage away now, so Tori can't proc. I guess Priming Shot was an option too, instead of the Gear Up. Right? No. Uh, it, was in, it was instead of the uh, Curl Up. But that's fine. Um... So four turns if we put a three cost in? Might be too long. Could put the priming shot in. Uh, we're drawing our next two... We're drawing our, our deck in two turns, so... If I put something in for more than three turns, it won't... Uh, I could be missing out on it, just costing less naturally. I think I put the priming shot in since it's cheap. Great, I ended my turn already. Alright, 26 again. We have the block. That's 16, this is 9. This gets me a Tory proc. Uh, I kind of want to play Strike for Strike, but I don't think I have the energy for it. I think it's Reroute Prismatic Spray. Defend and then get rid of a slimed.
Yeah. I guess I don't have to take Tori damage if I just play the other defend. There's no room in stasis, so no point in not playing it. Keeping it for later. Right, the orb block. I'm still not playing that until this is dead. But, can I maybe kill it now? Everything came out at once, that's funny. Uh, suspension... Temporal Strike does 18. This will do 19, that's 37. Priming Jump will do 21. Which is 58. And then we get 4 procs of Statistic Nature. 58 plus 28 is 86. Plus 12 is 98. Okay, so that doesn't kill. So a couple things here. Um, we're being multi-attacked again. And also, once we split Awakened One, they're going to be doing one big hit as well. Would really like to play Twin Slam if I want if we're gonna split. Actually I can just play Time Bomb and that'll do a shitload of damage, won't it? So this is how's this work again? I said this was thirty seven. But this costs one, this costs zero. Once we put something in, this will cost three. So we'll have four strength, so that's 24, and then two vulner and then double vulnerable procs, so that's 36, 54. So 54 plus 18, 72, plus 21 is 93. Yeah, I think that actually just kills. Okay. Let's do that then. Let's put something back into stasis. But what? <sighs> Once we kill Awakened One on the first phase, we can just play the orb block, so I don't want to put that back. I also kind of want to just play the Spheric Shield to have enough block for next turn. But then again, having block for next turn and the turn after is kind of important with the defensive mode. Especially because I'd be giving up a defense worth of block, and that's nine. That's a lot for zero energy. So I guess we just put a slime in so we can get rid of it later. We don't have anything else to put in. I guess a strike? Maybe a strike would be better. Have that value in two turns rather than just getting rid of a card. Okay. Alright, so this is in now. Oh wait, we can't play Orb Walk, because it's not actually dead yet. Not unless we want to give it two more strength. I could use Fire Potion. Nah. We'll use Future Tanks to put this back. That's our contingency plan. Alright, so what is this going to be, like 46 or something crazy? It's 46. Okay. Oh boy. Alright, this is going to be a lot of damage. In fact, I'm going to reroute the Twin Slam so I get to use it again next turn. How much damage do we do this turn? Oh my god. <laughs> that was insane. We did 235 damage. That's awesome. Uh, I want to get the Fend out of the draw pile because I think we can just kill next turn. So... I guess on the off chance we don't. Alright, cool. Goodbye, Awakened One. Alright. We only lost a little bit of HP at this fight, I think. We started at, what, 75? Because of Pantograph? Yeah, 14? That's not bad. Oh, and Pantograph heals us to full again. Haha. 
free apotheosis absolutely will play. Gotta be careful of Time Eater here, huh? Okay. Let's play Future Plans. Let's play Suspension. I think we just end up using a buffer this turn, so let's save Twin Slam for when we have Sadistic Nature. Five, six. Oh. Whoa, that's weird. Okay, the Echo of Charge Core, despite being an Echo, didn't exhaust. It went into stasis, but even though it costs zero, it went in for two turns. I guess because the discount from blank card is only temporary? That's pretty crazy. Uh, I don't know which one would have been better, to have this or this, but I'm actually kind of leaning towards this because even though it only is two turns worth of draw, now, now we're going to get this later for even more turns. Interesting. Alright, there goes Buffer. And we cancel out the draw reduction with our Charge Core, which is cool. Alright, can we play five more cards this time? This is two. Uh, yes, because we have three one cost and a two cost. So we get to choose three out of those four. But I do have to play Prismatic Spray, and I can't get vulnerable of any kind right now, so... We're just gonna go with this. I can also just let the ship go, but I don't really want to do that. I want to play Stasis Strike. And since I can enter defensive without using up the gear up, I'm going to. What do I want to put in? Oh, am I going to lose my buffer here? Mm, that's sad. Because even though I block for 26, uh, Time Eater's getting two more strength, so... Alright, whatever. The buffer was still used on 22 points of damage, so... Before this hit. I want the Strike or the Spheric Shield? That's a good question. I guess we get both, don't we, because of future plans? Yeah. So it doesn't matter. I could have put gear up in, but uh, I think I'd rather have it out. Have these discounted and out of the draw pile, honestly. Is there any chance we have a kill here? Either this turn or next turn. Twin Slam costs zero again. Let's do reroute Twin Slam. We take a lot of damage doing this, don't we? Well, it's not like I could have prevented it. Unfortunately. Alright, so time so time eaters below half. I'm gonna put this into stasis so we draw even more. Wait, why did this. Was this because this was in stasis? Why did it go in for two turns? I saved it in stasis. I guess playing it cost... It, it's the same thing as what happened to the other thing. Okay. That's weird. Um, well, I know this isn't going to kill, so I might as well just... I might as well just enter defensive for next turn. I probably don't have to use Spheric Shield, though. I can just use Gear Up. And I definitely can't play enough cards this turn, so I'm just going to get rid of this line. Uh, I guess I could trigger the thing next turn. Nah. I don't want just four cards. I think five cards is the minimum I need here. Sheesh. One, two, three, four. There's a lot of options here. Uh, I guess Stasis Strike does the most damage. I'll keep this for next turn just so I can use it. That was a lot of slimes in one hand and not very many cards I could play. Alright, let's win this. 
Uh, actually, do I want to play that instead? 22, 21, 43. 43 and 30 is 73, plus 28 is 101. It's 104. So not quite enough. So I guess I just put it in. Yeah, this would have been 37. If he would have been 4 off, like I said. Okay, these boss fights were actually pretty easy. Let's get that out. We'll kill this turn. Turns out Sadistic Nature is just bonkers with Red Candle. It's cool. 21, 36. You know, I never put it together before, but Pantograph is actually amazing for Act 4. I usually think about how it's good in uh, the Act 3 bosses since you get it to proc twice, so it helps you survive more. Uh, but past that, um, in Act 4, the biggest problem is fighting the heart right after fighting the Act 4 lead, but Pantograph helps so much with that. Uh, anyway, what do we do here? We're only 5 HP away. Um... So I think upgrading is better. That being said, we do have Apotheosis, so sometimes the upgrade doesn't matter. And that sometimes may... may happen both times, since there's only two fights left. That being said, I think making sure Sadistic Nature always uh, does 7 damage is really important. That's a lot of damage, and we need to do a lot of damage. Apotheosis can hit Polybeam later, and it'll be fine. Yeah, I'm going to do Sadistic Nature, especially because we also have Pantograph. There is a world in which we don't need all 25 healing if we rest now, so... Anyways, 80 gold. Uh, Dupe Potion, I think, is a great pickup here. But there's also Repulsor. I don't know how much I actually need Repulsor here. Oh, wait, no. Repulsor with uh, my, my makeshift battery, of course. Yeah. Um, better than Dupe Potion, is it? Dupe Potion's really good on Construction Form, Sphere Shields... I think they're both good. I guess taking Repulsor means I don't have to worry about Molotov and Fire Potion being gone. I can use these on the Act 4 Elite. And if I draw Repulsor early enough, I can negate one of the burns that the Spear gives me. I think this slightly edges out, because I get this in both fights. I don't have to replace a potion. These potions are useful for the next fight. Even though this can be really strong with any of the defensive cards I mentioned. Okay. Zero gold ending. Well, we're going to get gold from these guys. Oh, I got an Echo of Twin Slam. Interesting. I unfortunately cannot put that into stasis. But I can play Spheric Shield this turn, and that's really, really important. Uh, zero, one... Actually, that's also zero. So zero, 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 one, two, three, and then pick one. That seems fine. Let's do that. Now what's the order here? Do the Strength first or Twin Slam first? Because we have Red Candle that's going to strip Artifact... And I think Red Candle always goes first, because the attack hits first. So if I do Temporal Strike, Twin Slam, that will strip both Artifact, then I get the Vulnerable, and I get the Vulnerable for two turns. 
Okay. I guess I could have also gone for this guy first, but... Eh? Also, do I really want double future plans? I don't think so. I could just do that. We're gonna have a lot of block for this turn, and, for, and we're gonna need it, so... Alright, so Sadistic Nature time. Uh, it's just gonna be Shield Spikes and... What is this, 61? Wow. Okay, I'll play the Defend. Let's get Charge Core into Stasis. I don't think I could have afforded the uh, Repulsor there. Oh wow, I re-entered Defensive. Cool. Ooh. That Apotheosis is too expensive. I think we're just going to end up taking 12 damage here. We're going to use Construction Form to block... Oh wait, no. Uh, just the 6. Yeah, that's fine. I'm, I'm okay with this. And I'm going to play Priming Shot. Also, there's only one turn left, so I'm going to throw this here. Right now. Uh, might as well do this as well. So far, we're still within Pantograph range to full heal. We can afford to take five more damage. That being said, I don't think we'll need to. Twin Slam, Twin Slam instantly kills this. Reroute Twin Slam, I think, is better. Oh wait, no, it's not. This costs three. It's going to come out in four turns. Wow. Uh, what if... Do I do Reroute here, or do the second Slam? Reroute, I have to hit this one. Okay. Oh, wait, Holy Beam's going to hit it anyway. Oh, never mind. Wow. Alright. Defend finally comes out of stasis, just in time for this attack. Yeah, it looks like we're going to be just fine. Look at this damage. Ornamental fan. Oh, wow. Another stasis strike? There's no way, right? Maybe. Another stasis strike. I feel like that's overkill. I think we're already good. But maybe I'm incorrect. Maybe we want the consistency. Both in when we draw it and cost. I'll take it. Alright. Interesting. We get orb block on turn one at zero cost, but we also have sadistic nature, so I'm not too concerned. Oh, we can time bomb this out immediately. Uh, I can play every card in hand. One, two, three. Yeah, I only have three energy in hand right now. So I could reroute, reroute Polybeam. Time Bomb. Eh. It's a good thing I upgraded this, I guess. Okay, let's do it like this. I should have played the Orb Walk first, what am I doing? I guess I play the reroute again. And then Polybeam. Okay, we yeah, we almost damaged Captain Heart on turn one. 67. Where's my construction form? Okay, I guess we're just taking the full damage. 
It's a little unfortunate. Unless we draw it right here. Nope. That's a Sender's Bane. I guess Priming Shot could have put me into defensive here. I'm just going to put it in. Do I get... I don't get beat of death first. Okay. Alright, looks like we're taking 69 damage. And we're going to have to be in defensive mode for the rest of the fight. Uh, thankfully... The rest of the fight is going to be me dealing insane amounts of damage. So, I'm not concerned. Also, let's get some thorns. No construction form needed either. Interesting. Two cards to place into stasis, that's right. Uh, well, we're going to be in defensive for a while, so I might as well throw this in. I want to replay Repulsor. Okay. Apotheosis? I don't know. Oh, we do not want to play Twin Slam. I'm not making that mistake again. Okay, so I am doing this, though. Play Charge Core. Okay. Crisis averted. Do we full block? Are you kidding me? Even with all this turns of defensive, we still don't block all this. Where are, my, where are all my block cards? Actually, we still have Tori. This is 15. Yeah, we don't have enough health for it. You know, I think we just got really unlucky with our draw on turn two. We got three we we got three statuses and and ascended Bane. So even though we took a lot of damage, defensive mode wasn't enough to keep up. Sheesh. Wow, I, I can't believe even after all that we still died to an unlucky draw. Like... I guess just in case I did the math wrong, I'm gonna do this. No, it's just... Fuck. Well, that fucking sucked. Uh, at least the rest of the run was fun. Uh, bit of a rocky start in Act 1. I think I messed up with my pathing choice. But thankfully it wasn't too bad. Got future plans on uh, Floor 1 after taking way too much damage to two slimes. Then I got Jawworm for another 7. Took a shield spikes and then a sling of courage and orb walk. And the only damage card I picked up was temporal strike before the elites, but thankfully I still went okay. I'm gonna have to re I'm gonna have to rewatch that last fight and see if I made a mistake somewhere because I don't know. The, that fight should have been winnable, but I guess that's just how it goes sometimes. You know, I haven't watched uh, streamers play Slay the Spire on stream in a while. I'm sure they have runs that end like this, too. Just an unlucky draw in the hard fight and they die in the base game. Uh, 
we we also didn't draw either. So everything that went wrong in that fight, we didn't draw uh, any kind of defense on the sixty-seven damage turn. We drew four. We drew four statuses and curses. Um, we didn't get our stasis strikes. Uh, they were all at the bottom of the deck. Um, the turn we drew Repulsor and Construction Form, everything was too expensive. We got no value from Tori. Twin Slam cost too much, and also came on the wrong turn because I couldn't use it. Uh, basically, the the thing that went best in that uh, fight was turn one. I guess what I could have done was intentionally take more damage at the start instead of preventing it with defend. Um, so that I can get into defensive mode from taking damage. Because if, if you recall, I uh, proc'd ornamental fan, which blocked the last two damage, which could have put me in defensive mode. Uh, very notably early. I also didn't get to use the Spheric Shields. One went into Stasis, and then the other one... Actually, the other one was used when I was Frail, I remember now. Or maybe I just played too many cards before that multi-hit, but I don't know how I would have defended against the next big hit anyway. Uh, but enough about that fight. Uh, other highlights of the run. Pick of Rhapsody getting full use. I used it three times. Uh, I got... I got four commons and two uncommons. A bit unlucky, but I don't know how this is chosen. Is it weighted by... Um, if it's weighted by rarity, well, it certainly felt like it. But I feel like there's other places where you get random gems that doesn't care about rarity, so maybe this was just unlucky. I feel like we didn't get very much. I think the best thing we got was Amethyst. Amethyst went right into Twin Slam, and then everything else was pretty bad. Uh, putting Garnet into Suspension Plus was the right play, I think. Uh, getting Sadistic Nature was really, really fun as well. And uh, Blank Card had some interesting moments, too. So yeah, overall a good run, uh, other than the beginning and the end. That's just how it has to go sometimes. Uh, that's going to be it for me today. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope you stick around for future ones. If you do, I'll see you then. Thanks for watching.